starting off from where we left last time I forgot that we need to push our changes to Git. From now on, this will be at the end of every tutorial video. We are going to create a new branch that will reference the next. The reason for this is so in the next video, you can either do switch to the branch and start from that point. If you want to skip a couple of tutorials, but want to continue from this point, or alternatively, you could clone the program from this branch and start in the middle of the tutorial. I want this tutorial to be flexible in that way. So you're not forced to do every single episode. This will allow you to cherry pick what you want. So we're going to do git checkout. This is how we change to a new branch. And by specifying minus B, we tell it that we create a new branch. And then we do 01, first one, platform layer. Boom. Now we switch to a new branch. And then we are going to commit and push. Commit and push in Git is very simple if you use the command line. All you do is specify git add. And after those two things, you specify what you want to add. I could specify a file, for example, down here, the readme file or any other file. I could specify many files, not all of them. If I want to add all of them, I specify git add and then the dot, which is everything that changed. Boom. Then the next thing we do is create a commit. So we type in git commit. The next thing we tap in is minus M, which is a flag that tells Git that we're going to create a message now. After the message, we type in colon. Uh, so we type in setup build system and linked against local. Boom. Now this created a local commit. If we want to have this remote, meaning on the Git server, we need to push. So we type in Git push. And then we get this error message, which is basically telling us, well, you have created a branch locally, but I do not have this branch on my remote server. Do you want to push this server remotely? And it is telling us which command to use. So we basically type in that exact command, git push. And I just noticed I cannot spell. So we're going to rename the platform layer to platform layer. That is git branch minus m01 underscore platform layer to 01 underscore platform layer. A quick git branch. Check. Uh, small info. I had to change to SSH authentication because Git told me that password authentication was removed on August 13th of 2021. So I had to change all of that. But the command that we have to type in is git push minus u origin and then the branch name. It's going to ask me for a password. I'm going to give that my password and boom. We have now created the branch and let me show you what that means. Over here, I have this platform layer branch and this contains all the code that we typed in last time. Meaning in this tutorial, you can switch to the branch or clone the branch. So we have the same starting point. I'm just going to show you very quickly how to change the branch and how to clone the branch. Assuming you are on the master branch, you can then type in git checkout and then the branch name, which is 01 layer. Assuming you want to start here, you can do git clone dash dash branch and then the branch name, which is 01 platform layer, followed by the link. Boom. I will put these two commands in the description. Thank God we got that out of the way. Now I can actually get to coding. Now back in our program, we will remove the main function and extract all of the content into a VK renderer file. So we'll go into source, create a new folder called renderer, and then create a new file called VK renderer.cpp. Back in the main, we remove every single line of code except for the result and paste that in here. And then we create a function void VK in it. Put all of this in here. Going to use that later. And of course, don't forget the include. Okay, so we don't need the main anymore. We're going to remove this. Then we go into source and create a new folder called platform. And inside platform, we create a new file called win32platform.cpp. And this is where we put our main. Int main return one or maybe zero. This will be our platform layer. And we will put every single Windows function call into this file. So the first thing we're going to create is a bool platform create window. And it's going to take an hwind window as a parameter. Don't forget to include windows, windows.h. Boom. The first thing we do is get a handle which will identify us. It's called h instance. Instance get module handle a. The A means ASCII. I'm not qualified enough to tell you exactly what is happening, but Windows is trying to support different encodings. And ASCII used to be the default. Since then, they extended their encodings. And by doing so, they had to redefine a bunch of functions. But long story short, we are calling the ASCII functions here. 
Next, we need to create a window class, wind class WC. This is a struct and we can specify a bunch of things. For example, the callback, which is WND proc. Don't know what's up with the naming. And I'm going to call platform window callback. Boom, we'll define this later. And I think you started to notice, I'm going to prefix every single platform call with platform underscore. Later, this can be helpful if we might try to do a Linux build. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is the instance for the window class. And this is just the instance that we got here. After that, we need a class name. And this is just a string and we're gonna call this Vulkan Engine Class. Now we have the window class and we need to register it by calling register class A. What do we need? Well, the pointer to the window class, boom. But this is not everything. We are going to check against this if this returns false, we need to abort the program because something happened. We're going to do a message box A ASCII. And what does it want? Well, it wants a window. We can specify the window. And this can be zero, so it is no problem if this window is not initialized. Next thing, we need a text, which is the error message. And this will be failed registering window class. Title is error. And this U and U type can be MB exclamation yeah mb icon exclamation and mb okay Boom. and we also have to return oh. in case that worked we can actually already create the window we will later extend this but for now we want to have a window up and running very quickly so we're going to call create window exa again so this expects a style. I don't really know what this is, but WS EX app window is the one that we want. And the next thing we're just going to type in the same name, Vulkan engine class. We type in the window name. I call this Pong. Now we can specify some more styles, but for now I'm not going to specify anything so we can see what they actually do. The next thing is the offset where we want to place the window. I'm going to place this at 100, 100. Uh, the width is 160 and 720. Boom, we don't have a parent. We don't have a menu. We need the instance and no opera. Boom. Remove that. Now this call returns a window and we are going to assign our window to this call. Now we can check if the window is actually zero, which means that it couldn't create the window. And then we do another message box A, pass in the window because it is zero and it's fine. And then we say, well, failed creating window. Error. We do the MB exclamation icon and the MB. Okay. Boom. Return false. I can type. If that works, we can show the window. Window. And since window is so consistent with the naming, this is SW show. Who would have guessed that? Hey. Okay. So what we need to specify now is the window callback, the platform window callback. And this has to have a. And this callback has a certain signature. It starts with L results callback. And we do platform window callback and the first thing is the h wind window then we have a u int then we have a w param w param and we have l param l param and i should learn to spell platform this should be fine good and this function is going to be called whenever an action is performed on the window like closing pressing the close button resizing moving the mouse all of that stuff uh, if we don't want to handle any of these we can return Def window proc a uh, window message w param l param but now but in our first case we want to do at least one thing which is switch on the message and on the case wm close in case we close the window right what we want to do is we want to define a global variable called running and we set the running to false let's define that variable static Bool running is true. In case we close, we're going to do running false. Back in our main, we can now do platform create window, pass in a window, which we'll define in a second. And if check against that. If this is not returning true, we need to return minus one because the application failed to start. And we create hwint window on the stack for now. And we need to initialize that to zero. Boom. If we try to compile and run our program now, it wouldn't work because we removed the main.cpp. So we have to change this build the bat file. The first thing we need to change is the file that we want to compile, which is win32 platform.cpp. And this is in the platform 
folder. But this is not everything. If we want to debug our program by specifying slash Z7, this will output additional debug information, which will help us debug. If we tried building now, we would create a win32 platform.exe. I want to change that name that is generated by specifying slash FE and then specifying another name, which is main. If I now press Control Shift B, we get a bunch of linking errors. And this is because we need to also link against the new lib, which is user 32.lib. If you look at the documentation for creating a window, for example, you can scroll down and see here that we need a certain library in order to use this function. And this is what we are linking against here. If we now press Ctrl Shift B, the program will compile. If we now go ahead and try to run our program, we get an error. What is the error? I forgot to initialize this to zero. So the window class had garbage values inside it and supplied that to the register window class function. If we now run the program, it should run through. But it only blinks for a second, so I'll add in a while loop while running. We're going to do nothing. And let's try this again. This is our window. As you can see, it doesn't have anything to interact with. It just has Pong on the top left. And we can't do anything to close it. We have to manually close this button. Now what we can do is we can add some styling to the window. For example, WS caption, WS this menu, WS minimize box, WS maximize box over here and ws overlap and these are the common thing uh, these are the common flags that you'll see if if we now build again Control shift b and start the application you can see the different buttons over here minimize maximize the cross button and the name to the left but we still can't interact with this window and this is because we are not handling the messages that the window is sending to us let me show you what we can do so we go back in here and down here we create a new function called void platform update window which takes in an hwind window and then we have to define a message message and in a while loop we call peak message a again for ascii we look okay so we need a message this is a message we need the window we don't need a filter we don't need a filter and what we want to do is pm remove the message we then call two windows functions which is translate message this takes in the message pointer and we call dispatch message hey this also takes in the message pointer and once we do that in our while loop we can do platform update window pass in the window we then compile again press f5 to start the program and it is no longer processing and we can actually interact with the window for example close the window let's open this again now what we can do we can minimize we can maximize but we cannot resize right and we cannot do some basic things like going to the top here and then making it full screen this is another option which is called ws thick frame feel free to play around with these options by the way if we go here boom okay that's great so we can now open a window and close the window and we can handle the events. We are only handling VM close and we'll do more later, of course. One more thing I noticed is that the cursor doesn't change. We can change that by doing wc.cursor, which would be load cursor, then null, and the cursor name would be idc error. Then if we build the program and start again, it'll be an error, no matter what. So we now have a main function, we create a window, we update the window, and when we close the window, we return. The next thing we want to initialize is our renderer. So we type in if not vk init. Boom. And then return minus one, of course. We can also throw some error codes later, but for now, we're just going to do minus one. And since we don't have this, and oh, I noticed uh, we need to do the exclamation mark here. So up here, we include renderer vk renderer.cpp since this is local and this is external now our vk renderer the function is void we're going to turn this into a bool and we return true at the end so we can do some error checking later okay we compile the program try to run it and it seems like no the problem is i still not return through here then we compile again we now have a vulkan init and a window init happening we can now clean up our Vulkan code a bit because this VK instance will be lost. I want to supply this, but not to VK in it for now. I want to create a structure called VK context. And in the VK context, I have the VK instance. And we will fill this out with more stuff later. But what we're going to do is we pass in the VK context as a pointer, VK context. 
And then we can create the instance of this VK context by typing in VK context instance, the address of that. So now we need to create a VK context in our main function for now. I'll just stack allocate this by doing VK context, VK context, initializing this to zero and passing it into the VK init function by pointer. Now we could also use references here, but I like to use pointers. Obviously, we could use some more advanced C++ stuff like other pointers. And you'll see later why, because we will not be keep allocating any memory during the runtime of our program. We will only allocate once on startup and then sub allocate from that memory. But this is where we'll get later. For now, the stack will be enough. And what, but once this gets out, but once this gets out of hand, we will create something more more proper. Let's run a check real quick. If still everything works, looks okay to me. You can also do a small check if result is the same as VK success. Boom. Then we'll return true. Otherwise, we return false. Boom. Which will hopefully still run. Okay, good. And that's it for now. We now have to go ahead and do a git add. Boom. This is now we have added all the changes to this. Then we do a git checkout minus B for new branch, which would be O2. And then a Vulkan renderer init. Switch to the new branch. We do git commit minus M. Added a platform layer. Git push. I'm going to have to push the upstream. Git push minus U origin O2 Vulkan renderer in it and this will be the branch that we start in the next tutorial which will be out in a couple of days thank you all for watching and see you next time if you like the video you can support me by subscribing and leaving a like i also stream on twitch you can find the link in the description